I have always wanted to have my own golf green in my backyard, and look, finally got one. And I tell you what, I'm surprised at how affordable it was and how doable, and also how realistic. But I've also been told that around this area is some better ones. I'll believe that when I see it. First on the list is a man by the name of Wilkie, with a slightly bigger green literally right round the corner. Well, Wilkie, what I like about uh, this area is when you think about a lot of, lot of the way greens work on golf courses, and you often have a lot of 30-yard chip shots that are up onto an elevated green, which is exactly what you've got with the main part of the lawn down there. That's right, yeah. Yeah, it's getting a little harder. These, uh, these little bushy plants here are starting to grow a bit higher now, so I've got to get it up a little higher. <laughs> here we go. Oh, no, that's unlucky. I've hit the rubbish bin again. Why is the rubbish bin behind the green? Well, maybe that's telling you something, Mark. Perhaps you're rubbish. Cheers, mate. OK. I think you might be right, actually. <laughs> right, moving on. I've heard there's a young fella who plays off a scratch and has his own golfing oasis at home. Very nice. Mate. James, I am seriously impressed. You have got your parents to turn the whole backyard into a putting green for you. How do you find your green in comparison to the greens that you play, let's say, in tournament play? Well, when we first got it down, it was, you know, it's a true roll and only gets better and better over yeah. time. More yeah. walking on it, you know, it just gets faster and faster. So it is, it is actually pretty true. Do you spend a lot of time out here actually, you know, putting on it? Yeah, most nights with the old man, the yeah. comps. Because look where this is. For your parents, it's, it's right next to where they would sit, maybe in the evenings, where you'd have a barbecue. Yeah, I mean, flop shots over them, over the couch, on here. You do flop shots over the couch? Yeah. With mum and dad sitting there having a wine in the yeah. evening? You, you hit flop shots over them? Over them, over them. Really? I don't, I don't believe you. James is uh, a penance player for Remuera. In fact, he won the penance for Remuera. He is a very good player. I have total trust in the young players at my club. Awesome. Despite my trust in James, I think it's time to change my underwear and move on to the next green. I'm expecting big things. Oh, yes. Now we're talking. Two bunkers, full-size green, two tiers, contours and slopes everywhere. This is how you play golf in the backyard. I don't think people practice their bunker shots enough, but there's no excuses if you've got one outside your back door, is there? Mastermind behind these masterpieces is Arthur Parkin. I'll tell you what, Arthur, you've outdone yourself here. This is awesome. Thank you, Mark. Yes, this was, uh, from start to finish, was a challenge and a very exciting project to be um, involved in. When I came here, it was a tennis court, and we've turned a tennis court into a, quite a full-scale green which has uh, challenged us all on the build aspect and the design aspect and the logistics. Now here's a scenario that freaks people out having to chip over a bunker to a tight cut pin but not if you can practice it at home it doesn't. Go in. Oh. You've turned this into a great little golf complex. What other good things have you done? What are some of the quirky ones you've created of late? We've done quite a few out on the islands, up in the Bay of Islands and uh, Rikino Island. They were quite a challenge logistically. We built the green down in Cecil Peak, up on the top of Cecil Peak in Queenstown, where we had to fly everything up by helicopter, up and down, no roads there. So that was um, something really different, but a real add-on to the tourism in Queenstown. You reckon you're improving golf? Well, um, I hope so, because of what it does is introduces children to golf. At a very young age, you'll find as soon as we're building the green, as we're not even finished, the kids are out there playing on it. Mm -hmm. And so father and son, mother and daughter, you're introducing your kids to golf at a rather right early age. So I think it can be nothing but positive for golf. Mm. Oh. So as you can see, having a green in your backyard is realistic, no matter what your budget. But hands up, heard like a world-class par three in their backyard. Me, please. Artificial greens in your backyard may be one thing, but how about a real grass, real length, real par three to complement the barbecue area? We all know Sir Michael Hill has the hills, an 18-hole championship course, but did you know he also has a 120-metre par three in his backyard proper? Well, he does, 
And what more, he let a bunch of former cricketers christen it for him. <laughs> it was a World Cup, closest to the pin, and New Zealand choked. New Zealand was Wilson and Astle. Didn't surprise me, really. With a swing like Ricky Ponting's, it was no surprise they were competitive. But then you look at Warnies, and it was no surprise they got knocked out by the Windies and a right-handed Brian Lara. Get up there, baby. Get up there, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. He and Sir Viv knocked out the Aussies and took the Poms on in the final. The Poms with another Sir, Sir Ian Botham, and Graham Swan looked likely. <laughs> but once again, the two handicapper Brian Lara proving too good on the day. <laughs> Wendy's win, but really, Sir Michael's the winner here. It's great fun being here, and um, I want this house and I want this uh, hole in my backyard. Thank you. We all do, Warney. We all do. Oh, all right.